just how much farther can yields climb from here? Let's bring in John Bellows, portfolio manager for Western Asset, one of the biggest players in fixed income, nearly 400 billion in assets under management. John, you think this this move goes farther from here? Well, thanks for having me this morning. You know, I, I think the discussion in the long term needs to start with inflation. Inflation over time is the single most important driver of bond yields. And so I think that's where the focus should be. I think the, the message is, is that over the last one year period that you just showed, the inflation developments have actually been very constructive. All of the parts of the inflation that we had in 2022 that were so problematic have mostly worked themselves out. You know, the supply chain situation's better, a lot of the imbalances have been addressed. And today, inflation is much lower. You know, over the last three months, inflation's running, core inflation's running two to two and a half percent, not all that far from the Fed target. So over that one year period that you just showed, the inflation news, I think, is unequivocally better. I think that's also made it possible for the Fed to get closer to pausing. You know, they could hike again later this year. Markets priced for some of that, I guess. But I'm not sure that really changes the big picture. The big picture is the Fed's close to done because inflation's falling. So as we step back and think about bond yields over the last one year, you know, when yeah. you think about inflation, when you think about the Fed, you know, both the developments there are consistent with stable to lower bond yields, certainly not consistent with the sharply higher bond yields that we have seen. But that's what we've seen. So are you guys buying hand over fist? Is that what you're saying? Betting on lower yields? Yeah. yeah. So, I, you know, I, then, then the question is why, you know, given inflation and Fed development's been constructive, why have bond yields moved up? You know, I think probably the biggest reason is a big change in the growth optimism. You know, we went at the beginning of the year, we had a very negative consensus about growth. People worried about recession. You know, that was really peaked in March and April when they were also worried about regional banks. And six months later, that's flipped. And today we have a lot of optimism about growth. It's not uncommon to hear people say, we're not gonna ever have a recession and, you know, and growth has upside risks. So there's been a big change in the growth optimism from kind of pessimistic at the beginning of the year to now a lot of optimism. Um, you know, I think we should be careful here. I think it's, it's it, we should scrutinize kind of what's going on in growth. And, you know, from our view at Western Asset, it would be wrong to extrapolate a few quarters of good growth forever in the future. I think there's a lot of headwinds facing the U.S. economy. You know, the consumer's under pressure. Interest rates are higher, which is putting pressure on manufacturing and housing. Um, you know, bank stocks were mentioned. You know, lending conditions are pretty tight. So I think you need to be really careful here of taking that, you know, optimism about growth and extrapolating it forward. And I think a little bit of caution there is probably warranted. And yeah, if you put that next to the sharp rise in bond yields, even a little bit more cautious growth outlook together with the positive inflation and Fed outlooks, you know, I think those could be the ingredients of a move lower in yields from here. Although, John, the, the reasons people give that are not growth oriented, uh, Japan's policy, China recycling less, obviously government dysfunction, which has been on display uh, this week in particular, can you remove some of those from the list? You know, I think those are all important topics. Um, I think investors need to be thinking about those. We need to, you know, try and quantify them where possible. I guess the thing I'd like to contribute here is is the price. And so in investing, you always have to think about the idea, but then you have to take it to the market price and see what is the market discounting. And what we're struck by is just how much of that's already discounted or already reflected in yields. Um, you know, think about it this way, you know, currently, the long-term interest rates priced in the Treasury curve are 150 to 200 basis points above the Fed's estimates of neutral. Now, the Fed's estimates may be too low. They may need to come up over time. But 200 basis points is a big gap that's opened up. And I think for a lot of the reasons that you just suggested. Another way to think about this is in terms of real interest rates. You know, prior to the pandemic, we had real interest rates around zero. Today, we have 30-year real interest rates at 250 basis points. So I think there's a lot of the things that you just suggested are already reflected in prices. So we should have discussions about each one of those. I'm happy to go into that. But, but again, the main focus here for investors is a view as it relates to the price. And I think the price reflects a lot of this. And when you start from that observation, you know, I think the, the distribution from here is probably asymmetric. A lot of the news is already reflected there. And there's scenarios where we actually have much lower yields you know, should any of those storylines play out or if they were to change for any reason. 